Garden, you can see downtown from here. For Ron Emanuel, the former mayor of Chicago, this library... How's the retirement going? Yeah. It's good. How you doing, more right. important? Yeah. Nice to right. see you. Everything good? Looking good, yeah. <laughs> These people in Chicago's Little Italy neighborhood... Miss you, miss you. Yeah, take care. ...all part of his legacy. You're no longer me. You no longer have to do that. I take it you enjoy them. Man, it's people. He's had a long career in politics, perhaps best known as President Obama's chief of staff. He's also worked in the Clinton White House and served six years in the U.S. Congress. This is the apartment building we grew up in. To me, it's just home. And when you know you've found home and it's found its place in you and it can't let go, that's where you always come back. He served two terms and was the city's first Jewish mayor. Emmanuel's grandfather fled ethnic unrest in Russia. He was affectionately known as Big Benga. What will your grandfather say about your time running this city that you both love? Okay, I don't, because I've never been asked, and I'm trying to not cry while I talk about uh, Grandpa. He would say, first of all, one is that I put myself out there. You believe in something, you put it on the table. What would he be disappointed about? He'd be, probably, he'd be disappointed about issues like on uh, poverty that we didn't uh, get all those done. He muses on grandfather's impact and his time in politics in his new book titled, The Nation City, Why Mayors Are Now Running the World. Especially now as national politics, both home and abroad, have become so contentious. I had no idea that by 2020, the prime minister of England would be the former mayor of London. Bloomberg, Buttigieg, Sanders, all mayors, more now running than at any time in 100 years. Everything you think about government as how it really impacts the way you go about live, work, and play. Is it Washington? It's pretty much local government. Emmanuel's own term as mayor was filled with highs and lows. By the numbers, you had many successes as mayor, but the Chicago Sun-Times op-ed gave you an F for collaboration. Why did that happen? Because when I locked and loaded on th something and I thought it was important, I then basically pursued it to get it done. You're not bothered by having enemies. What garnered the enemies? A little more than a year into his first term as mayor, Chicago's public school teachers staged a seven-day strike, the first in nearly 25 years. Eventually, Emmanuel achieved his objective of lengthening the school day. There have been 500 homicides this year. While in office, Chicago also witnessed two of the bloodiest years in its history, the murder rate eventually going back down. But it was the 2014 police shooting of Laquan McDonald that took the biggest toll on his mayorship. Six city stops and a cover up. With accusations of a cover up by his administration and police department after Emanuel's office initially resisted releasing video of the shooting. I said all along, and I want to repeat the reform to be effective and to be lasting, it must be done with police, not to police. An inspector general report did not implicate Emanuel's office in the cover-up. Why don't you fight to have the video kept private? Every city, the entity, state, when they're investigating something, they hold into the investigation all the material, relevant material, until it's done. Chicago was no different. It was a long practice. But it illustrates all the level of distrust. Did you it, make a mistake yeah, by not releasing the video? It, yeah. Okay. It remains a sore spot after what, by almost every measure, was a successful tenure. In 2018, Emmanuel announced that he would not serve a third term. You say that you decided not to pursue a third term to spend time with your family. Your successor, Lori Lightfoot, said it was because you couldn't win. Well, that's all hypothetical, but we know one thing from prep past. I've never lost an election. I will never forget the honor it has been to serve alongside you, the people of Chicago. Though his chapter as mayor is over, his transition to author and pundit, Swift, since July of 2019, a contributor here at ABC News. He's never been afraid to lend his opinion on the race for the White House. And I'll say one thing about Bernie Sanders. His playbook is no different than Donald Trump's. On this day, he shut the pundit image, wants to show us his hometown his way. Bloomberg was in town. He went to our school of transportation. While Rahm Emanuel earned his combative, hard-scrabble reputation, we found a man now at peace with himself, very much in love with this city, and dare we say, a softer side. They're running hundreds of people through here every day. The school's doing well. Spearheading a partnership with Chicago local schools to build a trade facility. We have kids that can see all the buildings going up. There's beautiful architecture, and it represents power, it represents opportunity, it represents the future. 
you keep the Cubs hat if Don makes you take it off, okay? How long you been in this session? Uh, this is the third week right now. What uh, made you decide? Uh, the job security. They're training to be solar installers. If they do work it right, they become a licensed electrician. If I may ask, what, what's the average hourly pay of an electrician in Chicago? If they look forward five years from now, you'll be making $45 an hour. Next stop, Mariano's. How are you doing? What you running for? Nothing. Nothing? No. <laughs> I ain't running for nothing. A grocery store built on the site of a former Ida B. Wells public housing project. All right, honey. Go ahead. This was a manifestation of the inequity. Did I fix food deserts? Is it different today? Are there eight grocers in eight different neighborhoods that didn't exist before? And off to the train. One of the things that your critics say about you is they call you Mayor 1%. Mm -hmm. That you cared more about what happened downtown and oh, by the way, to the other communities. Nobody in the 1% cared about the free community count, the raising the minimum wage one of the first cities to do it. I understand the criticism. I'm proud of the fact that we kept the revenue growing so I could invest it. When I read your book, it reminded me of every book I'd read by someone who was planning to run for president. <laughs> well, then I'd be the first person to ever run with a second wife. <laughs> so, no. Here's the deal. I've gotten to work for two great presidents. I have no interest in running for that job. I have a very interest in making sure there's a Democratic president, but no interest in running for president. From his immigrant grandparents, who, like so many, came to America with a dream generations ago, today, Rahm Emanuel, his family, his city, manifestation of what's possible. I'm good. Complicated, combative, some may question portions of his record, but not his love for a city, nor his efforts to make his ancestors proud and his beloved hometown better. Chicago just has a pull on my heart, my soul. It's where my family started, and I think it's, I really do, I think it's the best city. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.